All right, so those of you who know me know that I like spicy food. Well, tonight we're going to take it to a whole new level. Welcome to Scientific Drinking, episode 27. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about capsaicin and the inadequacies of the English language. Cheers. So you may just notice my setup's changed a little bit. Instead of the books, I have my beer over here, and I also have this selection of hot sauce. And based on the inspiration of the uh, Hot Ones series on First We Feast, we're going to be doing our own little Hot Ones here. I'm slightly terrified. Now, I love spicy food, but some of these are taken to a little bit of extreme. But first, let's talk about what I'm drinking. Tonight, I'm drinking Schilling Hard Cider, Excelsior. Excelsior! Imperial Apple 8.5% cider. Yeah, got my attention and it's not too sweet, pretty dry. And my first wing is going off of this uh, Pepper Palace Red Eye Rooster Sauce. Kind of a sweet flavor, sweet vinegary flavor. It's not too much. All right, here we go. Oh, hot. And by that, I mean temperature hot, not spicy hot. That's the inadequacy of the English language that I was speaking about before. Isn't that a pretty significant failing of the English language that we always confuse spicy spicy or spicy hot or hot hot temperature or hot spicy? It's all confusing. There are many words for this in other languages. Japanese has karai, which specifically means spicy. Chinese, la, which is spicy. Russian has pranye. And in Farsi, tond, as in tondori, tondori chicken. If you've ever been to an Indian restaurant, they have tondori chicken. Well, tond means spicy. Or actually, funny nuance about that is it also means fast in Farsi. So that means English isn't the only one with degeneracies in meaning from sound, which shouldn't be too surprising. But my favorite word so far for spicy, as in hot, as in has a lot of capsaicin, is definitely from Spanish, enchiloso which literally means in chili, has a lot of chilies. And I really think that we should adopt that in English. So when I say in chili during this episode, it means spicy, hot, lots of pepper. So onto the science, that's why we're here, right? What makes in chili things in chili are the chilies themselves. And what makes chilies hot is a substance called capsaicin. Now you may have heard that capsaicin is spicy because it has little thorny pricks that stick to the inside of your mouth and that's why it's spicy. It's not actually spicy, it's thorny. That's bullshit. Capsaicin in its purest form is a fine white powder, not unlike powdered sugar in appearance, but of course much more, shall we say, volatile. It's an irritant to the flesh of most mammals, and it's speculated that it evolved in such a way to discourage animals from eating them. <laughs> that worked out well, right? All right, so my second wing is based on hotline delivery system. It's a pretty tame sauce. I actually got it at a conference for free. I kind of advertise a certain company, but it's actually a really good sauce. Don't tell them. Hmm. A lot more of a meaty flavor than the previous one. Slightly more burn, but nothing significant. The spiciness of a wing can be described using the metric of the Scoville scale, which is represented as Scoville heat units, or SHU. That's right, there is a measurement for enchilliness. Enchilliness. And Chillidness. We'll work on that bit later. The Scoville scale is named after pharmacist Wilbur Scoville, an American. Wilbur developed the organoleptic test in 1912 to quantify how in chillied something is. Now, his method isn't the only one, nor is the Scoville scale the only way to measure it, but it has become the most popular by far and is the only internationally recognized unit of measurement for in chillidness. In addition to the Scoville scale itself, there is the issue of pungency, which is deceptively important. Pungency is a way of measuring how dense the capsaicin is within the pepper, and is calculated in terms of parts per million heat. In other words, how much burn does a given pepper produce in relation to its size? This relies on a method of high performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC. HPLC is used for various manufacturing purposes, as well as a way to calculate PPMH, but the concept is the same either way you pass a pressurized solvent across the sample. The sample then breaks down at varying rates depending on what it's made of, and in this way, its components can be separated and analyzed. However, the Scoville scale is imprecise. And that's not necessarily an inherent flaw of the methodology, but of the peppers themselves. For those of you who enjoy a good jalapeno, you might recall times when it tasted more like a sweet pepper and other times when it kicked you in the mouth. That's because the Scoville level of a jalapeno varies between 2,500 to 5,000 Scovilles. 
but other measurements within the same species and breed of pepper can vary up to 10 times. That's an order of magnitude. All right, time for the third wing. Yeah, okay, a little bit, a little bit more burn. There is my first sip. So that one, by the way, was Swift Burn Smoky Hot Bourbon Sauce, and it's been lying around in my cupboard, and this was just an excuse to use it. A little bit of heat, but it's not too bad. So after our discussion with the Scoville scale, I'm sure your next intuition is to see, well, what's the highest rating on the Scoville scale? Well, the answer is a little bit more nuanced than you might first think. That is, if you haven't already Googled it on your phone. I'm watching you, Kevin. First, let's talk about context a little bit. Your average bell pepper might have a Scoville level of up to 100 or so. That's pretty much nothing. The pepperoncinis you can get on your supreme pizza at Costco might be a bit more, but not much more than a thousand at worst. So that's an order of magnitude higher than bell peppers, and the same order of magnitude as jalapenos, which as I mentioned before, range from about 2,500 to 5,000 Scovilles. But here's where things begin to escalate. Serrano peppers, while relatively mild to spicy food enthusiasts, still range for about 10,000 to 25,000 Scovilles, which is significant to people who are used to enjoying jalapenos and pepperoncinis. This is where people who say, I like spicy, exit stage left, and the people who remain are the people who say, yeah, spice it up. Yeah, baby! Yeah. So this is where we start talking about things like habaneros. However, in my experience, wings like mango habanero really don't do the pepper justice, which actually weighs in at a whopping 100 to 350,000 scovels. If you're a spicy food enthusiast and you've never actually had a habanero pepper by itself, you might be in for a rude awakening because it's nothing like the habanero wings that you had before. This is why the issue of pungency is so important. It has a very high density of spiciness. But now for a brief aside. All right, this one's a chocolate habanero sauce. Right on time, right? We're talking about habaneros. This one's one of my favorites. Chocolate on wings, right? Works out pretty well. Yeah, it's got a bit of a kick to it. Cheers. Before we get on to the really spicy peppers, let's talk about wasabi. If you lie within the Venn diagram intersection of those who like spicy and those who like Japanese food, you will have undoubtedly dipped your sushi into the wonderful mixture of soy sauce and spicy wasabi. Now the history and use of wasabi probably deserves its own, if obscure, episode. But the actual traditional Japanese wasabi is not especially in chili but instead just kind of spicy, as in a pleasant spice to add to a finely made dish of sushi. And the wasabi that most people are familiar with, probably including you and me, isn't actually wasabi. In fact, actual wasabi is quite expensive, and the wasabi that most people are familiar with isn't wasabi at all, but a spicier imitation made from mustard seed, horseradish, and various other spices, along with some coloring. It's all a lie, but more on that in another time. That aside, you may be wondering where wasabi lies on the Scoville scale. Well, wasabi is in the Brassicaceae family, more commonly known as mustards, and include things like mustard, wasabi, horseradish, kale, cabbage, watercress, and more. None of these are actually peppers, and thus do not produce any capsaicin. Instead, wasabi and its extended family all generate something called allyl isothiocyanate, which is what produces the short, nasally burn. That's why wasabi's burn is so different from pepper's burn. It's intense, it's fast, and then it's done, gone, never appear again until you take your next bite of wasabi. That's because it's fundamentally made of a different chemical. But if we had to place wasabi on the Scoville scale, where would it be? Well, that's difficult, considering they're different chemicals and interact differently with the body. And considering that different restaurants have different wasabi recipes. But perhaps the burn you experience might be somewhere between 10,000 to 100,000 Scovilles, but only for a brief period of time. All right, back to the Scoville scale. So this one is an organic habanero pepper sauce. It's from uh, Arizona, from a small retailer, and uh, I know from experience this one's kind of a kick. That being said, it's the first time I've used it on a wing, so let's find out. This one, the burn comes like a few seconds after, and then it starts tearing up your mouth. It'll tear up more later. All right, so back to peppers. After habaneros, things get kind of nasty. There are special versions of the habanero pepper itself, which bumps itself up to the next level of spiciness. These are known as the red Havina and chocolate habanero, which rate at up to 750,000 Scovilles. These are specific breeds of pepper that were selectively bred to produce more capsaicin and did not exist in the wild before human meddling. In fact, everything from here on out didn't exist in the wild before humans started making them. The Naga Viper and Trinidad Scorpion Peppers were both bred at Specialized Farm to reach a level of well over 1 million Scovilles. 
The capsaicin of these peppers is so bad that it is not recommended to touch them with the bare hands. This is the same category as the boot jolokia chili pepper, famously known as the ghost pepper. This pepper is so strong that it was used to create chili grenades by the Indian army as a non-lethal way of controlling or dispersing mobs. It was first used in 2015 to successfully flush out terrorists from a cave. Now the top tier goes to a selection of peppers. As I mentioned before, each individual pepper within the same breed could produce a different Scoville level. And it varies a lot, up to an order of magnitude, and thus several peppers compete for the top slot, depending on which pepper is tested. Here lie the likes of the Dragon Breath, Pepper X, and the dreaded Carolina Reaper, arguably the hottest pepper in the world. Alright, second to last one, here we go. This is called After Death. So it shouldn't be very painful, because after death you don't really feel anything, right? Right? Uh, that's a bit spicier. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> now, there are other industrial applications for... Uh, man. There are other industrial applications for capsaicin that are beyond just chili grenades. Pepper spray... <laughs> man. Pepper spray is true to its name and is made out of purified capsaicin. This can range from a few hundred thousand to a couple million scovilles in heat and directed at your face. It's not pleasant. Had it happen to me, too, but just, it's not enjoyable. That's the same amount of heat in the last two categories of peppers we discussed, and some people can eat them outright. Inversely, there are medical applications for capsaicin, including the treatment of arthritis and joint pain. It has also been shown to be effective treatment for shingles. Additionally, capsaicin has been shown to be effective at treating prostate cancer. The American Association for Cancer Research has shown that it can kill cancer cells through a method called apoptosis, which basically means breaking down the outer barrier of a cell and causing it to disintegrate in your body, which is good if it's cancer. Now, that's far from a cure for cancer, but what it does do is slow down the growth and maybe even stop it altogether in certain clinical trials. That being said, there could be some real downsides to eating too much spicy food. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to this one. This is called aromatherapy, and uh, this is made with the Carolina Reaper pepper. Wish me luck. Hey, you know, it doesn't seem too bad. I must have missed something because it's really, oh. Oh. <coughs> so, sticking to the subject of cancer, a meta-analysis carried out in 2017, which is basically a study of studies, <coughs> established a tentative link between the consumption of spicy food and gastric cancer when compared to a control group. However, no statistically significant link could be made between other types of cancer and heavy spicy food consumption, meaning that spicy food may have a very small chance of making this one cancer more prevalent, but, but it's kind of hard to say. The guy in the YouTube channel, What I've Learned, linked in the description below, did a great job of talking about why nutrition is really hard to quantify and why some of these studies just are a pain in the butt, really. Mm. And I'm pouring this knowing that at the end of every episode, I down my beer, so I don't do this lightly. <sighs> However, there are some things that should discourage you. For example, the devil shot, a vodka shot that has had the Carolina Reaper soaking in it for a long time. Drinking too much of this at once left a poor gentleman in his 30s with a literal hole in his stomach. He survived, but this other guy from England didn't have so much luck. After eating an especially hot fish cake, word is that the 51-year-old man died of asphyxiation after the lining of his throat was eaten away to the point where he couldn't breathe. Um, uh, an autopsy revealed that there was actually third-degree burning on his esophagus. <coughs> kind of like what I'm feeling in my stomach right now. Now, I don't really believe that was entirely due to the capsaicin. There might have been an allergic reaction going on as well that exacerbated it and some kind of complicated reaction inside of his body. I say that because it would theoretically take three pounds of ghost chilies to kill a 70 kilogram person. Three pounds of ghost chilies. Now those are one and a half million Scovilles each and just three pounds of them. Can you imagine? You have to put it in a blender and guzzle it. No, there's no way. So that concludes this episode of Scientific Drinking. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about spicy food and enjoyed seeing me suffer. Things I do for entertainment. Cheers! Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. This is uh, going to give you a treat. Now, this is how you eat a wing. I'm gonna break it up like that. Twist, 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 and bam.
out comes the bone. Now you can take this whole bugger right here and just And just like that, no problem. 